plateau, you're considering getting an electric vehicle or EV. But maybe you've heard some negative stories, maybe you're not too sure about how much money it could save you, maybe you're not sure about the environmental impact. Well, I'm a battery electrochemist and I've been working with and driving electric vehicles since 2009. So today I'm going to run through some of the common questions and misconceptions and hopefully answer those questions that you have. Well, one of the first questions that many people have is how much money will an electric car save me? And for most people, the running costs are less than half of an equivalent size of petrol or diesel car. A prime example is my own Nissan Leaf, which I bought second hand, and it's cost me about £8,000 to buy back in 2017. That car has saved me £1,300 per year in fuel, tax and maintenance. And that figure is even a saving of £800 a year versus the lightest, the most efficient two-seater hybrid on the road, a Mark I Honda Insight. I know this because that is the car that I bought my Leaf to replace. Basically the most efficient car on the road that doesn't have a plug on it. I am still saving you know, £800 a year and that is versus something that is not only considerably smaller and lighter but only has two seats rather than being a big spacious practical family car like the Leaf. Those figures quickly become even cheaper if you use a special electricity tariff that gives you discounted rates overnight, for example. And also, if you have solar panels on your roof, obviously you can charge your car for free. And on top of that, there are many public charge points that are still free to use. I mean, admittedly, we're starting to see charging tariffs coming in on more of them, but you're still going to save a heck of a lot of money versus petrol and diesel. And as for maintenance, as I mentioned earlier, electric vehicles are incredibly reliable. An electric motor will genuinely do about a million miles without fault, and the battery tech is catching up with that. Even the oldest electric vehicle batteries are good for well over 100,000 miles, in most cases considerably more than that as well. So why is an electric vehicle so much more reliable? It's because it has so few moving components. It's a mechanically very simple machine. If you look at a petrol or a diesel car, you've got hundreds of moving components in the engine alone. Whereas to power an electric vehicle, you only need a handful of moving components, and those are very reliable. So typically servicing consists of kicking the tires and saying it's fine. There's very little that goes wrong with an electric car, and that saves you money. If you want to find out more about the money-saving merits of electric vehicles, check out the evmarketplace.com. So what about the practicality of EVs? Are they actually all they're cracked up to be, or are they actually a bit of a faff? Well, the average round-trip commute distance in the UK in 2019 was 23 miles. That's really not much. In fact, so much so that a modern electric car will do that about eight times without having to be plugged in. Even my short-range Nissan Leaf electric car, the 24 kilowatt hour battery, the smallest one they did back in the day, that quite happily did a 50-mile round-trip commute. And that was mostly motorway as well, without needing to be plugged in. In fact, 68% of journeys within the UK are less than 5 miles. Even the oldest Nissan Leaf, the oldest electric cars, will do that at least 12 times without having to be plugged in, and the latest Nissan Leaf will do it over 40 times without having to be plugged in. But where are you going to plug in? Obviously, if you've got a driveway or a garage at home, that's perfect. But even if you don't, there's over 14,000 locations in the UK where you can plug in your electric vehicle. And that number is growing all the time. By the time you see this video, that figure will be horrifically out of date whereas the figure of about 8,400 petrol stations is probably going to be in decline. If you're on a long journey, modern electric vehicles can rapid charge within the average time spent at a UK motorway service station. And even older electric cars like my old Leaf from 2014 are surprisingly capable of taking on cross-country treks. I've taken mine from Edinburgh as far north as the Isle of Skye and as far south as Leeds, but that's not by any means the most travelled short-range electric vehicle. I'm aware of someone who's taken a Nissan ENV200 electric van, basically a Leaf but in van form, same size of battery, from Wales all the way to Hungary for a wedding. What about the energy side of the practicality argument? Are electric vehicles going to melt the grid? Absolutely not. The national grid have said so themselves. In fact, the national grid actually quite likes electric vehicles because they're mostly charged overnight, when there's a lot of excess renewable energy from wind farms, but very little demand to use that. So instead of paying wind farms to shut down, what they can do is they can deliver that electricity that otherwise wouldn't have made it onto the grid to electric vehicles. And that means that there's less need to use fossil fuels later in the day. So actually electric vehicles help to make better use of renewable energy and balance the grid. 
Once again, you can find out more about these nuggets of wisdom at theevmarketplace.com. So what about the environmental impacts of electric vehicles? Are they actually bad for the planet? Well, far from it. Because a typical electric vehicle, as I mentioned before, the motor will last easily a million miles without fault, and the battery tech is catching up rapidly. We're seeing gradual improvements in chemistry. The range is improving by about 10% per year, for example. But on top of that, the lifespan is improving too. So batteries are lasting longer to the point that there's every possibility that the chassis of electric vehicles is going to rust through before the battery finally dies. And when it does die, what we would call a dead battery in an electric vehicle still has loads of life left in it, because it's still got about 70% of its original capacity. 70% of between 40 to 100 kilowatt hours of battery capacity is actually loads to use for energy storage, and there are already multiple companies that are producing second life batteries for your house or for grid scale commercial energy storage using old electric vehicle batteries. So those batteries will last many many more years in grid storage once they've been taken out of an electric vehicle. But of course they will eventually die within those energy storage systems as well. Do they get directed to landfill? No. The recycling techniques can be used on lithium-ion batteries today can recover up to 100% of the materials within the battery, and there are over 90 firms worldwide working on ever-improving ways to recycle lithium-ion batteries to make it even more efficient, to make it even better at recovering those materials, and creating a circular economy. But what about the materials that go into a lithium-ion battery? How do we get those in the first place? Does that damage the planet? Well, lithium, let's look at that first, Lithium only makes up about 10% of a lithium-ion battery. There's really not much of it in there. However, there is actually quite a lot of lithium in the world. There's 14 million tonnes of lithium on land and 230 billion tonnes of lithium in the sea. That is enough for over 18 trillion Nissan Leaf electric cars. Also, lithium-ion batteries contain no rare earth elements whatsoever and cobalt, the other contentious material, is being rapidly phased out of electric vehicles. And in fact, multiple cobalt-free batteries have been released on the market, and Tesla is already using some in some of its Chinese-built Model 3s, which are coming to the UK today. Even if an electric vehicle and its battery are built and charged using fossil fuels, an electric vehicle will save over 20 tonnes of CO2 over 160,000 miles, versus an equivalent petrol or diesel car. If you power the electric vehicle using renewables, and if you make it using renewables as well, then that saving is over 40 tonnes of CO2. And in fact, there are already many companies that are building batteries and electric vehicles in factories that are powered by renewable energy and have carbon neutral production standards. Also, as for that figure of 160,000 miles, by that point, a petrol or a diesel or indeed a hybrid car are probably going to be giving you quite a few reliability issues by that point, an electric vehicle is still going to be going strong, and that includes the battery. Another important factor for the environment is that electric vehicles have no tailpipe emissions, which means that they're not pumping out NOx or petrol or diesel nanoparticulate matter into town centres. NOx and nanoparticulate matter cause severe health issues, so the fact that you're using an electric vehicle that removes those pollutants makes for healthier town centres. Again, you can find out more information on this at the evmarketplace.com. So what about the performance of electric vehicles? Are they dull to drive? Absolutely not. If you've never driven an electric car before, I would strongly recommend taking one for a test drive because they are addictively good fun. Electric motors aren't just very powerful, they have an abundance of torque, and they can deliver that torque from zero RPM. What does this mean? It means that the car is very capable of putting down all of its power very quickly, which gives you brilliant acceleration off the line. And that applies even to standard family cars like a Nissan Leaf. They are surprisingly good fun to drive. Compare and contrast with modern petrol or diesel cars with lots of efficiency measures that they're trying to include and emissions reductions measures that they're trying to include as well. That has generally sucked the fun out of the internal combustion engine. They are quite gutless, joyless things to drive. Meanwhile, an electric motor gives you back all of that power and torque and then some. A prime example is when I took my 2014 Nissan Leaf to Sky and to Rasse, two very hilly islands that have insane gradients. Every petrol and diesel car around us was screaming away in first gear trying to tackle those gradients. My humble little Leaf tackled all of the most extreme hills like they weren't even there. 
Another advantage of electric vehicles is that they have a very low centre of gravity. The reason for this is because the battery is mounted on the floor. This gives you excellent stability and handling through corners. These facts have not been overlooked by motorsport, and there are already several very exciting motorsport series that are all electric that you can check out today. The oldest and most established of these motorsport series is Formula E, high-power, single-seater, all-electric racing that takes place in city centres all across the globe. Fans can get really close to the action, and within its seven years of existence, it's already seen significant improvements in battery tech and motor technology too. Several well-known car manufacturers have Formula E teams, and there are many former Formula One drivers on the grid. Another all-electric racing series to check out is ERA, or Electric Racing Academy. This is a lower tier motorsport category, but it's much cheaper to enter than the equivalent petrol powered series and encourages maximum innovation when it comes to motor technology and battery technology. We're going to see some very exciting developments off the back of this series, so it's going to be very exciting to watch. Another electric racing series that's gaining a lot of traction at the moment is Extreme E, which is all about all electric extreme off roading in some of the most remote and rugged terrains in the world. These terrains also happen to be the ones that are worst affected by climate change. The sport aims to improve awareness of electric vehicles, but also improve awareness of climate change and what can be done to combat it. To find out more about electric vehicle performance and motorsport, check out the evmarketplace.com.